everyone to the meeting. I ask everyone to turn off their uh, uh, microphone unless you're called upon so we don't get background noises and everyone can hear anyone. That includes you, John. Do. All right. Uh, so welcome everyone to the meeting. Uh, this is a meeting of the Transportation and Public Safety Committee meeting uh, of, C of Community Board 2. Uh, we welcome everyone who's coming and we will go through. I, I want to welcome, we have two new members tonight. We have uh, Nicole Murray and Esther Blout, who's now um, formal members of the committee, which brings the number, number of members to 14. We have 14 committee members. So I want to welcome everyone. Uh, again, uh, please uh, turn your uh, cameras on and your microphones off, except when you are uh, called upon. Uh, I, pr I prefer if you raise your hand so I know who wants to speak uh, and that you should wait until you're actually called upon to speak. And uh, I don't believe we've had any uh, requests for accommodations. We will allow public uh, uh, comment on agenda uh, items when the agenda item is up. If somebody wants to comment on the agenda item beforehand, please raise your hand and remember that such comment is limited to three minutes. We will also have uh, a community forum at the end where if you want to discuss an item that's not on the agenda, that you can do that. So the 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 open session for public comment is on agenda items and the other uh, community form at the end is on any issue, transportation or otherwise that you may wish to discuss. Uh, John, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Sid. Uh, Chair Sid Meyer. Present. Secretary John Quint, present. Ernie Augustus. Okay. Sandy Valboza. Present. Esther Blount. I know Esther's here. Okay, she put up her hand. Um, Julia Cullen Chung. Present. Uh, John Dew. Present. Doreen Gallup. I don't see her. Cheryl Gelbs. That's here. Kate Gilman. Present. Brian Howell, but I didn't see him. No, I haven't seen him yet. Okay. Uh, Patrick Kalaki. He's here. here. Thank you. Nicole Murray, we already Present. heard from. And Ciro Scala, I see him here. also. All right. 12 people present. 12 of the 14 are here. Uh, I ask that we have a motion to approve the agenda that was previously sent out. I got a motion. Oh. John. Uh, John Dew, seconded by uh, 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 Kate Gilman. Hearing any, anyone opposed, hearing no opposition, it passes. Uh, I don't know if it, have you had a chance to review, I've reviewed the minutes from uh, January 22nd. Any comments, any corrections? Hearing none. If anybody has a comment, uh, a suggestion, you know, that later on, please email John Quint NB. So the next thing on the agenda is Nicole Murray, who I've asked to report on the district level crash statistics. And Nicole, please do. Yes. So thank you very much. Um, so this is going to be the first attempt at doing this in an easy to read way for the community board. And I can put this into the drive if needed, just tell me where to put it. Um, definitely open to suggestions on how to make this more clear and readable. Um, and I'll talk about where I get the info from and so on. You could feel free to hit share screen, Ms. Murray. Yeah, I'm just trying to. It's loading. Okay, can everybody see this chart? It looks great, thank you. Okay, great. So I'm starting with September and going through um, the, the prior month. So it's not gonna have February until next month. So we have January here on the right, um, it's September on the left. The blue bar are the total crashes for the Community Board 2 district. And then the lines you're gonna see are uh, divided up by like what, what they were. 
the red line at the top are the total injuries and fatalities across motorist, cyclist, or pedestrian. And then they're kind of split up down below. So we have total crashes in blue, and then the total injuries and fatalities put together up in red at the top. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions about this? And again, totally happy to change this format if it's like really hard to read, um, but any comments so far? I can't see the screen if anybody Ms. does. Ms. Murray, so. could you maybe just uh, up in the upper right-hand corner next to the share box, you see that blue box with the arrow? Oh yeah. That should expand to fill the screen. Hmm. That is further up. No, the little blue box. Yeah, that's what I'm hitting. And then it says I need a meeting code. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, maybe under view on the upper left. Let's see. Full screen. Full screen. There we go. Slightly better. Well, <laughs> thank you. Is it small? Okay. I, again, so I'll, I'll try to do it. What's important here is sort of like a trend overall and the um, month before. So I'll read the month before. And it actually was a pretty good month, all things considered. Um, so in Just Community War Two, we had uh, 28 total crashes with 39 injuries and fatalities, actually no fatalities. Um, but we had 31 uh, drivers who were injured, four cyclists who were injured, and four pedestrians who were injured. Um, as we can see though, it's quite better than other months. Um, October was kind of a high. Um, September is when we had the one fatality, the baby Apolline. Um, so this is how I'm thinking of presenting it, just like kind of going month by month. Um, so next meeting we'll have February. So we just get a picture of what's going on in our district. Well, I, I asked you and you sent me the, the trends over a period of time. Sure, you, yeah. You don't have do. that to, to show the people, do you now? I don't have it in a graph form, but I can quickly just read those. So Sid asked me to also look at um, five year, uh, one year, five year and 10 year. Um, I'll just quickly read that. So January, 2021 to 22, there were 695 crashes just in Community War II with 881 injuries and five fatalities. Uh, so that's just in a year. Um, for the five-year period, January 2017 to, 20, to January 22, there were 3,695 total crashes. Uh, that was with 4,775 injuries and 11 fatalities. And then the 10-year period, January 12 to 22, um, we had 7,267 total crash, uh, crashes. 9,319 injuries and 27 fatalities. That is just community board two over the 10 year period. Um, I can create a separate tab that kind of shows that since it is a larger trend, um, but you know, it's not great, um, but that is what we are looking at. And, and the 27 fatalities, do you have the broken up by, you know, what, what are drivers, yeah, yeah. you know, can you just, just so that people know what, what those yeah, numbers show as well, if you don't yep. mind. So for the 27 fatalities that have happened over the past 10 years in community war two, we have one cyclist, 18 pedestrians and eight motorists. Oh, that doesn't add, yeah, that adds up. Yeah. One cyclist, 18 pedestrians, pedestrians and eight motorists. E Esther, you have a question or a comment? Yes. Um, shouldn't the fatalities be broken out separately and not put together with that line on top? Uh, I could do that. Yeah. I just put them all together. The fatalities for this short period are, are low. Um, it's just the one that we have. So I could break them out. I just thought because typically the fatalities are quite low, um, adding, going ahead and adding them together was a little bit more useful, but I can certainly separate them out. Okay. Uh, John, you have, a, you have a comment? I just had a question. Nicole, do those fatalities include the BQE? Uh, they would have con con uh, anything that is in a community board too. So yes. Okay. Thank you. John, you had a question? Please. Exact same question of John Dew, which was how much of this is BQE versus, and for that matter, maybe even Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges versus surface streets, but. Yeah, the, the majority of the fatalities are, and, and serious accidents were actually along Atlantic Avenue and Flatbush. Um, I will go and show you where I'm getting this data. It's just a little bit hard to read over a trend map for CB2. But if you go to this site, CrashMapper.org, this feeds in from open data, which is where all this data comes from, um, NYPD and so on. Um, and you can see these dots uh, in these districts um, where, where things happen. Um, so you can also filter by community board. So if I were to do it here, um, I can see this is just going to be for January the, this month. But if I were to go back 
10 years, you know, this looks like this. <laughs> um, and as you can see here, the red dots, which is where the fatalities were, we have a lot of Atlantic and a lot on Flatbush and then coming off the BQE here. And You're just not gonna see a trend, you'll see the total. Okay, Th uh, Nicole, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I have the, the screen back so I can see? Is there anybody who wants to make a, a, a open session for, pump, uh, for public comment on the agenda items? Just one quick question, Sid, if you don't mind, for Nicole. Okay, yeah. Nicole. Um, first, awesome graph job that I feel like that's really easy to read. And I know that's a little bit of work to put together. So thank you. Um, relatively new to the committee too. And it's so, so good to meet you and have you. Um, I'm wondering when you're looking at the trends, like Sid was talking about one year, five year, 10 year, if you break it out year by year as well, just to see year over year, is there any, any like um, direction that we're moving in terms of becoming safer or less safe. And we can mm -hmm. try to map that onto some of the policy choices we've been making as a borough and as a district. And I think the total number is helpful, understanding like how many, how big this gets, how many injuries and crashes. But I think I'd be curious year over year um, as well as the month over month, like you're looking at. And if there's something yeah. seasonal or, or otherwise happening. Yeah, I'll see what I can put together. Brian put a link in the chat of something that's similar. It's just yeah. a little bit harder to like kind of look at um, and you can't break it out as much, um, but that's there. And um, I will say that uh, looking at the trend lines, the safest month was when COVID locked down because nobody was driving. Right. Um, so it dropped um, <laughs> significantly, yeah. but um, the, the community board does seem to follow generally the citywide trends, which is interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, first before, uh, John Quint, uh, Brian Howell is now is Howell is now now here. Okay, go ahead, Sandy. Thank you. Uh, I who should go? Should I Sandy. go? Sandy. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so I have a question uh, about Atlantic and Flatbush. In uh, 2018, the pedestrian improvements over there were completed, and I was wondering uh, if. Um, the chart shows the difference between after the improvements in that area and before the years before the improvements, or or is it all the? Does, did it make a difference? Uh, I didn't have. I only had the last six months, or maybe even five months, in my chart. But I can definitely, Taya, if you take that note down, um, I can uh, take a look and see if we can see that. You, any, anyone who wants the open session comments on the agenda items? Sid, uh, I'd like to ask Nicole another question, if I may. Yeah. Hi, hi, Nicole. Uh, it's Zero. Thank you for this uh, report and welcome to the committee. Uh, Thank you. Does, does, your, um, uh, does the graph show hot spots at all? Does it point It does out, on like, Crash Mapper. It does. And we, we could see that in our community, like Tillery and any, any certain intersection like J Street, we can focus in on that yeah. area. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Yes, on that on the crash mapper link, it has the ma actual map in it. The red means fatality, and the larger the dot, the more um, incidents there were there. So you can really right. see clearly that it's quite along Flatbush and Atlantic, especially. Right. Thank you. Sharuti, did I pronounce that correctly? You did. You, so you wish to comment on the agenda items? Uh, yeah, so I'm so sorry that I'm late. Um, I tried to join at six o'clock, but the link was not working. I kept clicking it and it just wasn't working. Um, so so um, back to what Nicole was saying, is there a way we could take a look at that graph or is that something we can see? I think Taya will send out the link. Okay. Thank you, because I missed that part and I just oh, wanted sorry. to take a look. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that because uh, yeah, um, because I you know you know drive there um, every day because I commute to far yeah. away, and I, I I'm curious to see um, the graph. Sure, you will uh... It's also going to be in the minutes, and and we'll put a link, and there's a, and I and I think we have a link already up to it. So so uh, okay. uh, we'll 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 go on, but I want to go on to the I want to go on to see if there's open uh, for the open session comments if there's anyone. Hearing none, at this point, I'm going to turn the matter over to uh, 
Uh, Captain Wilson of the 88 Precinct. Captain Wilson, good evening. The 84 Precinct was originally scheduled, notified us last night that they had a, some sort of emergency meeting with the district attorney's office and that they will reschedule. If there's somebody else here from 84. Yeah, 84 is here. Okay, good. So uh, we're going to start with 888 and then we're going to come back to 84. Gotcha. Go ahead, Captain Wilson. Uh, yes, good evening. So uh, first of all, I just uh, introduce myself. I'm a Captain Wilson. So I'm have almost 16 years with the department. I only have five months in this command in 88, right? So uh, my commanding officer currently on uh, vacation. So that's why I'm doing this meeting with you. So uh, so basically, uh, what I'm saying, you know, few you know, keynotes. So what's a camp start itself is a computerized statistics. Since 1992, they invented to monitor all activities and let know all commanders what areas will be concentrated activity and like, you know, all forces, all like the you know, resources, right? So basically before that, it wasn't like uh, probably unknown to every commander, you know, before 1992, nobody knew like you know, actually how bad it is in certain area. Right now it's much better. Now you can see like in every hour, every like day basis, every week, see what you know, up and down, like, you know, crimes in what area. So basically uh, uh, looking for last three years, you know, wise, you know, so actually we have the decrease in overall crimes, right? Because due to pandemic could be like, you know, I just, you know, compare like, you know, let's say, uh, Accident wise, you know, uh, comparing the total accidents in the year 2020, uh, year to date, looking from January uh, 2020 to February uh, 17, it, uh, it was 188 accidents. And then year 2021 was 100 accidents. And then this year only 78, right? So, the, so it's all like, you know, kind of decrease because uh, I would say definitely like, you know, some improvement made. So they create a different, like, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Captain, Will, Captain uh, Wilson, I, Kevin, I don't mean to interrupt, but I yes. have a request. For you to speak a little bit uh, slower well, okay, okay, and okay. a little bit more distinctly. Oh, okay. well, Captain Wilson, I'm also standing by if you'd like to go through your slides. They're ready. Uh, okay, so no problem. Yeah, okay. Should I should I start the slides? Yes, okay. Okay. Slide number one. Okay, this is for two commands for eight four and eight eight. So for both commands, right? So basically, it's supposed to be uh, both commanding officers, but you know, uh, actually, that I mean, one of them attending another meeting with the district attorney right now, right? So that's you know, both uh, captains, like so, executive officers, myself, and uh, uh, executive officer from 84 precinct will be present, right? So again, so come start, it's short for computerized statistics. It's a, a multi functional, like you know, a program is designed to collect all data from all uh, resources, like. Uh, people reporting accidents, you know, complaint of crimes, uh, summonses, you know, collisions, you know, domestic incidents, and then it shows to commanders on an every day, every hour basis, you know, like, you know, what uh, area we should like, deploy more resources, right? Basically, right? So it's like, you know, better than it was before, before it was uh, 1992, when they created it, it was obviously very hard for every commander to like manage the uh, where to deploy resources. Right now, it's very easy. Right now, you see, like you know, just come to work, realize, okay, that area, I would say, gang assault, or let's say, a robbery, so like you know, uh, multi accident collision. Right, so uh, it's much easier right now. Okay, so I can go for. That's how it basically looks like when we're like, you know, on our computer. So you see all this, you know, breakdown. It's actually a screenshot from a seven seven precinct. So then day, it's actually from almost like uh, July twenty twenty, right? So all this, you know. Data you see, like uh, on a uh, like worst of worst order, obviously, like a uh, homicide, rape, robbery, assault, and so on. Uh, after, like, you know, like, like larcenies and mischief. So, you see, like, you know, what area we should actually say everything in yellow that means, like, you know, that's you know, worst of worst. Whatever, like, you know, in uh, like minus 100 percent, that's mean, like, you know, it's kind of decreasing. Whatever in yellow should alert you, should be like, okay, let's say uh, we have uh, 130 I minutes, mean, the 77 precinct have that year increase in a uh, felony assault then you can click on each uh, you know specific one on the map and you see okay this area that's where it happens and then you just deployed more resources talk to like victims talk to witnesses get some video from uh, around and then you apprehend them and then you arrest them and that's how you resolve right that's easy right okay so basically this is uh, a smoke shops uh, the very strict rules how you people apply for license and how to operate them basically when this shop is open somewhere and the school nearby, they cannot actually have all this, you know, like a shiny advertisement. So this like uh, kind of store only could be located more than 500 feet away from school. 
or any religious, you know, like you know, establishments, right? To kind of prevent kids going inside. Also, like uh, none of the like you know smoking products should like available for like a, you know anybody to grab and go because what's the chance you know child may actually trying to take it. So that everything that like consumable should be like locked down, like locked in into some kind of cabinet with a key. So only people who you know how like you know employees you know who sell this stuff can have access. So obviously for safety purposes, right? So. Uh, and also should check, you know, if someone looks like, you know, very young, should check for ID. So basically nobody like age 18 uh, uh, can sell, uh, dispense or handle any tobacco products, right? Or any kind of other like, you know, tobacco related stuff, right? So, and also uh, New York City Department of Finance uh, and Customer Affairs will regularly like, inspect these locations for compliance with the uh, existing, uh, like, you know, current uh, law, right? So uh, as long as... Uh, People comply with the existing regulations, have a license, so and there is no complaints, no crime committed, so you cannot really take any enforcement action within these establishments, right? So if they operate, you know, like a legitimate business, so let's be it. So you cannot really do anything. They pay taxes, they have license, so so they just you know can do it, right? No problem. Okay. Uh, okay. So but if any criminal activity again appears, so then gonna be like you know notification made to you know again a civil enforcement unit. Legal bureau, and then we'll consider it. So, if we're gonna just like you know, basically uh, doing an investigation around, right? So, next slide is uh, uh, okay. So, basically, it shows you know how like that. So, those numbers that total you know, called index crimes basically everything combined together from murder to the you know, uh, then larceny, robberies, burglaries, everything together. So, basically, for last the 10 years, you see actually significant decrease, right? From you know, 1200 up to like you know, 68, you know. I mean, it was a uh, total year, 1,200 crimes, and 121 is in first uh, three weeks of the year, 2012, and now we only have 68 total crimes. 68, I mean, like, you know, everything combined together. Uh, uh, felony assault, robberies, bullies, uh, grand larceny, grand uh, larceny auto, right? So, uh, so just specifically for this year, 2020, uh, right down, we have uh, only 12 uh, robberies committed versus to year 2020, it was 25 robberies. So that's almost... Uh, you know, twice, you know, you know, amount down, right? So basically, hundred percent down, right? So it's uh, due to many reasons, right? So because every police officer get trained, you know, like on an every week basis, and email to log in and check, you know, most current, you know, uh, up to date, you know, regulations. Basically, yes. So educational stuff works on every level for police officers and for community, right? Obviously, right? So next slide, maybe. Okay, and this is basically also on the, from Comstar. That's how we click on a map, and you see you can click on each, uh, like you know, the, uh, sign over there, and it will show like you know basic uh, story. So is the rest made or not? You know what area you should actually you know deploy more resources. So so what happened in uh, 83 scene? So most of the crimes happens uh, near the Flatbush Avenue. So like you know, and that's called sector uh, Charlie and David. You see this on the top uh, right side, and. Uh, in the sector boy, which you know, towards the east side, like it's less crime happens, right? So, well, that's uh, understandable because most of the commercial, you know, activity does happen since the flood shining, right? So, and that's why it's all, uh, you know, criminals, I guess, uh, they have some, you know, you know, trying to commit crimes. Because if it is residential area, sector boy, like, you know, there's no stores there, right? Just, you know, that's, I guess, criminals have no opportunity. That's why they concentrate in a, a commercial district, right? Okay. So, okay, this is uh, basically we have two uh, open patterns, right? So, one is, uh, let's see. okay, uh, okay, now one is number 13. Uh, it says uh, about uh, five males uh, approaches a victim, right, from uh, area around Holguin Park, and they're all wearing, like, you know, hoodie, you know, uh, masks, so you know who they are, basically. But actually, in fact, we did apprehend five people who commit the robbery on January 25th. Unfortunately, uh, they all uh, let go, right? On a uh, release uh, on reconnaissance. So it was uh, two juveniles, 12, 13 years old, and three were well, like, you know, from 18 to 20 years old. So uh, those who is 18 to 20, they have numerous arrests in the past. Some of them have committed robbery, three robberies within the last two years. So that's why they get released. I don't know. This is really like a problem. So with uh, how to make decisions at courtroom. So because if person commit robbery, just in last November, so why would we be released again? You know, so I don't understand really. So this is a problem because we catch them and then they get released, you know, less than 12 hours later. It's really unfair, right? Unfair to victims, I mean, right? Okay. 
next slide this is uh okay and okay so basically uh, uh how the, we can you know help to work together basically definitely like you know to young people the family members community members should you know make meetings you know uh, make those uh, uh, young people attend and explain to them what they should follow the law stop you know like you know kind of like uh, making friendship with uh, any gang the violent you know people who commit crimes right because what happens so uh like out of school program that's also important so let's say out of school they can get into gangs because i guess there is an opportunity for them you know in those areas so if uh, community leaders can talk to assembly people you know somebody in albany and ask for more resources to create more after school programs to engage them in any sporting activity right it would be great because if they engage in the sport activities they're not going to be congregating into gangs that's understandable right okay okay next one and uh, basically so uh so we have a lot of explorers programs right so uh also uh what the community should do they should uh talk to other city agencies right how to uh just you know deal with uh, all this uh homelessness and uh, people who are like, mentally sick they're not supposed to go directly to shelter and when they're released you know, on the street that's a problem it should be all the people should be individual like you know talk to and somebody should found them like a proper program how to like treat their mental illness right because they don't know what they're doing on the street and they become sometimes victim of crimes themselves or they just committing the crimes unknowingly to another against another person right so that's a big issue right all this you know uh, mentally sick people who kind of like wandering the streets right and use uh, shelters right and near commercial establishments right so that's uh, too big the issue right so okay so so far so far in general like you know 88 you know have uh, in overall a decrease you know in crime just uh, two things is a grand larceny order is up to 150 percent and that's a citywide pattern basically so i guess like you know uh when people like whole city recovered from covid right and so some criminals trying to find an opportunity to I mean, some crimes, so that's why they're stealing the vehicles. It's happening in almost every prison, right? So, uh, like, what we're trying to prevent it. So, what we're trying to do, trying to uh, explain to the people first uh, who leaving the vehicle park and engine running, not to do it because if somebody sees, let's say, some uh, person who thinking about the commit crime or not, if they see vehicle running and uh, owner just step out for like a grocery, that's a good chance vehicle gets stolen because already have key in engine running. That's easy, right? That shouldn't be happening, right? Plus uh the way actually when they park it right so vehicle park for um, like over a week you know that's mean like you know also if somebody you're looking for that vehicle so they may have a plan to you know steal it right so basically people should be like you know uh at least you know like you know uh always you know be alerted right looking for potential you know uh way to secure the vehicle in such location like when it's like you know easily to you know see it like is it still there or not like if they can park overnight within a block or two fine but if the parking like you know 10 20 blocks away for months you know and then you know reporting vehicles stolen so that's that's you know really not good right okay yeah well uh, captain uh, thank you yeah okay i'm gonna call, i'm gonna ask you uh, hopefully yeah. you can hang around because i'm sure we, i'm sure the committee has lots of questions or lots yeah. of comments what i would like to do is call on the people from the 8-4 next if they would like to say something okay i know that we have christopher kenny who's the uh one of the uh uh one of the uh community affairs police officers but you also have the uh the deputy commander who's online as well and, and uh, uh deputy uh, uh, captain would you like to uh say something sure hi good evening everyone captain maffey i'm the uh executive officer of the a4 precinct i'm sure you, everyone knows the commanding officer inspector rana i work just underneath him um Again, Captain Wilson, awesome presentation, very informative, um, answered a lot of the questions I feel like I was supposed to answer, but just to talk about the 8-4 for a little bit. So overall, <clears throat> for, the, for the period, as we call it, or the month, we're down in crime, 1.3%. For the year to date, we're down 20% in crime, okay? Um, just to make it a little bit easier or more uh, straightforward, when I'm breaking down the 8-4 precincts, uh, burglaries stand out, grand larcenies, and GLAs. So I'm going to talk briefly about those. So regarding our burglaries, okay, we have a lot of burglaries here today. Uh, last year at this time, we had 16. This year, we have 32. So why are our burglaries up? All, most of our burglaries are all at commercial establishments. They're all occurring throughout the midnight tour. 
Um, and a lot of them are front door entry and removing either cash or electronics, all right? Um, they're mostly focused in Sector Boy, which is up by the Dumbo area, as well as in uh, Fulton Avenue where all the stores are, okay? We're very much on top of that. That's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, our grand larceny is in the A4. Those are mostly fed by, by either people leaving their property unattended or shoplifting, again, on Fulton Street. Or if you uh, go play basketball in the park and you leave your back, you, you put your backpack down, someone removes your backpack, all right? So it's not like we're having a lot of face-to-face uh, -face crime contact, right? The burglaries are happening overnight. Grand larcenies are happening on a tenant property. Uh, property. The other thing that we're up in, GLAs. Captain Wilson said it's a citywide problem. It is. Of our GLAs during the period, which is only three, two of them, the cars were left unattended, unlocked, and running. That's very easily fixed. <laughs> that's very easily fixed. I feel bad for the victim because they are, but something that's very easily fixed, all right? So part of the uh, speech or part of the presentation was how can the community help us out, right? Don't leave your car running unattended. You're living in the city, it's not a, it's a wise thing to do, right? That right there could take away two of our GLAs, all right? Um, if you want me to get deeper in the crimes, I can. I'm not really sure. I think you're still muted. I am. Please do. Okay. So with the burglaries, again, most of our commercial establishments, right? Most happen over the midnight tour from 12 to 7 in the morning. So we changed our personnel to address that. We've identified the people that do those things. A very small percentage of the population commits a very large percentage of the crimes. Okay. So we've identified those peoples. We've moved our personnel to combat that and we are seeing success in those measures okay um some of these burglaries the front door entry is very very minimal meaning something as much as easy as possibly a roll down gate in front of the front door of the building with a padlock would stop a lot of these burglaries because some of these premises they're glass doors which makes sense and these perps are just either pulling on the door or simply using a small little tool and getting in the door. So some of these buildings, these burglaries can be corrected by just securing the doors a little bit stronger and or uh, possible roll down gates. Now, I'm not a business owner, so I don't know how hard that would be to do, but I will say that there was one business that it's a historical site. That owner cannot add a roll down gate. So, there's certain, there's certain conflicts we have with trying to secure the buildings, but that's how most of these burglars are taking place. They're looking for the weakest entry points and using them, okay? Um, but all these buildings have cameras, which is awesome because we can see the camera footage and we're able to track these, uh, these criminals down and identify them. So securing the front doors would help, but we already have the cameras, so that does help. The problem is, the crime has already occurred and we want to try to prevent the crime. Um, grand larcenies, leaving things unattended. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, and it's a lot of shoplifting, which we work with the businesses on Fulton Street as well as on Atlantic to try to combat that. Now, if you're a business owner, we will give you a free crime survey. Officer Jara is the crime prevention officer. You can contact him via your NCOs, via Twitter, by just calling the command and you will come out to your business for free and run through all the security issues to help enhance your business protection. Okay. Um, one last thing, <clears throat> packages. We get a lot of package thefts. So a lot of people order things, it gets delivered to the lobby in a box and these criminals will enter the building and steal the packages. Now, coming from someone who orders a lot of products, I just, I would love to see if the building or the super could arrange to somehow secure incoming mail via a secured door or even just a big bin or a cage because that would stop a lot of these package thefts. These guys are just walking through the front door and taking all the packages that are sitting there. If there was any type of metrics or measures to where maybe the doorman 
to secure the packages somewhere and then notify the tenant, that would eliminate a lot of these package thefts. So. Okay. Uh, still Questions? There you go. And uh, John, uh, I the one hand I see up is John Dew. So John? Yes, Captain. Um, we have a large homeless population in the downtown district. How much interaction do you have with them above ground and below ground? Good question. So as far as below ground, I'm assuming you mean transit? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, so the transit PD30 on Skimmerhorn will focus on the below ground, below ground interactions. We deploy more, more officers down to transit as of late because of we see what's going on down there. So I put posts down there um, as far as underground. Now, homeless condition is not an easy condition to address, all right? If it was, it would have been corrected, all right? There's a lot of things going on with that, okay? So we usually defer to outside agencies to try to help these people because you can't force them out of locations, certain locations. So it's hard to deal with the homeless. What you try to do is you try to uh, open up a dialogue to see if they need any type of services, if they're willing to accept services. And if they do, we get them all the services they're willing to accept, okay? Such as healthcare and then trying to find a residence and whatnot. If they don't accept any services from us, unless they're necessarily breaking the law or mentally uh, uh, disabled, there's, don't, there's not a lot that we can do with homeless, both in transit and outside of transit. So if there's, when we notice these homeless conditions, I generally will have the NCO officers try to establish a dialogue and they'll work with the outer agency to try to render services. And we kind of go from there. And wherever that homeless individual takes us is where we pivot to try to help them. At the end of the day, I don't think anyone wants to live on the street, but they have to accept our services in order for us to help them. And we do have success stories from that, all right? But we also don't. So it's a very, very difficult issue, but it's a constant, Thing we're working on riding the subways for years and years and years i understand how that uh relationship is in the subway so us and trains that work together to try to uh address the homeless in transit and then the a4 precincts we deal with it on the street level did that answer your question it does do you have a list of all of the folk that you contact that are uh willing to get services versus the list of those who are not willing to get services so when we do our dialogues and our interactions, there are notes maintained. If they give us their information, it is documented um, with the outside agency. Breaking ground is one of them. As far as my NCOs, they just try to learn who the people are because they're working, my NCOs work in the same areas and the homeless people are generally in the same locations. So they just try to know who they are more on a personal level. And then you just keep chopping away at it. And hopefully at some point the trust is given and we can provide them services. But an official documented list somewhere, we don't keep that. Thank you for that. Okay, Sarah. Sarah, you're still on, you're still on mute. I want to welcome both captains to the meeting. Thank you for coming. I'd like to see this done on a regular basis. If you don't mind, that'd be great. But for both captains, I want to ask you a very simple question. What do you find as your biggest challenge now, today, that you would like to see corrected? Both, I'd like to hear from both of you, if possible. Uh, let me say, so basically, uh, the biggest problem is uh, the court uh, judges keep releasing the criminals who commit robbery. It's like, that's a good example. So January 25th, we arrested five people. Uh, okay, let's say juveniles, we can actually do educational stuff, understand what, anyway, other three. Uh, 18, 19, 20 years old. Uh, they all have committed a like a uh, gang assault and robbery last year, November. So now they released back then within 24 hours. Now again, they get uh, what's called release on own reconnaissance. Why is that? I don't know. So that they're supposed to be at least you know, staying for like a well, it's failing. It's supposed to be more than a year in jail, right? Now when they get released, sure they commit more robberies, right? That's the biggest problem. So someone should like you know push all these you know, people in Albany to remove that no bail reform because it's only hurting victims because. Put this way, uh, when I'm in a prison, so I have victims coming to me and asking me, Captain Wilson, please explain to me why the person who committed a crime back on the street next day. Why? No answer. So the victimizing the victims, basically. That's the biggest problem. 
Well, obviously, right. obviously, the mayor agrees with you on that. So, okay. And uh, can I hear? Thank you very much, Captain. How about the other eighty-fourth precinct? Uh, hi. That's a very loaded question. Um, <laughs> challenges, right? With my job, I guess what the challenges I see is the things that can be prevented, right? That kind of gets to me. So, like I said, leaving the car running with the in it unoccupied. That's a challenge. Um, the shoplifting in the area is a challenge. Uh, not only because when they get arrested, they're generally released, but it's usually the same individuals um, and it just keeps going. So that's a challenge dealing with uh, shoplifting because I feel for the business owners as well as the burglaries. That's a challenge. Uh, the, the geography of the A4 leads to certain crimes uh, burglaries is one of them. Grand larceny is one of them. Those are the challenges for the A4 um, that I find to be the biggest. Did that answer your question? Well, I, in a way, but I, I just want to, I was really thinking about the broad challenge that, that you would like to see. Um, for instance, um, the parole uh, issue is a big issue. I know everyone is discussing. Sir, it sir, 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 I have five other people. Uh, I, I, will, I will defer. I will defer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Amen. I, you, you're Amen Shahab? Yes, yeah, you got that. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Amen. Um, I'm relatively new to the community board. So I guess part of this is also, out, and I can bring this up in the public agenda or the community forum, like what we can do specifically about it, but directly a question for uh, the folks who are representing the police department. Um, you had mentioned that, you know, for example, at the subways, if there is a homeless person, you come and you speak to them um, and see if they want services. And if not, if they're not committing some kind of crime, there's nothing really you can do in that situation. First, my question is what constitutes as a crime from that end? Um, I think from, from both personal experience and like what I've been seeing, there's been from like this, you know, the least severe side of things, a lot of verbal harassment that occurs, especially to women. Um, from folks on the, just riding the Metro. I've had men follow me home from the Metro. They're not doing anything. They're just like, or not doing anything physically, but cat calling, et cetera. Um, and especially recently there's been, you know, don't know if this is necessarily an increase in numbers or just in the publicity that occurs, but there's been so many senseless violent crimes that have been happening uh, by homeless people. And I know that there's intersection with social services about that, but the reoccurring trend is that a lot of these folks have prior to this committed less severe crimes, whether it's burglaries, et cetera, and they continuously are let out, um, you know, without bail, et cetera. Um, and I had an assault experience last year and the person who assaulted me assaulted two other women that night and was literally let back out without bail that night. And his court case is still pending and it's been pending for about a year um, and it keeps getting pushed back. So I guess I, I know that was a lot, but all to say like what constitutes that as a crime and is it being recognized that these crimes that ended up quite literally ending up in murders or like very severe cases, is there recognition that prior to that they commit smaller crimes but are let out because of the policies or laws that are intact? Uh, Captain Wilson, so basically uh, we do send the, our patrol officers uh, to train station uh, to check, uh, you know, if it is any problem there, any people who actually want to engage in what call aggressive panhandling. Basically, what is a aggressive panhandling? Like, so let's say, uh, like commuters, they kind of like you know could be on a train inside the you know train car or somewhere you know kind of like one of the walkways, and if person kind of like you know blocks the any you know aggressive groups, say let's say the people who were asked for money not free to leave the corner up, that's called aggressive panhandling because a uh, person. Uh, you know, have nowhere to run. Especially if you're on a moving train and then asking for money, that's always considered aggressive penalty because you have nowhere to escape from this person with demanding money from you. Understand? So this is definitely crime. So other stuff, it could be anything from menacing to just uh, I would say, you know, it's the time to like you know uh, commit like you know almost like a robbery. It's the time to chase somebody down, right? That's definitely if it is absorbed by officers, arrest will be made for sure. And then uh, it's up to the court. To release them and keep it. Most likely they're going to release them anyway because uh, it's, uh, I guess, well, non bail reform. That's how it works, right? So, what you should do, ask politicians to kind of like, you know, reconsider it and do some changes because, plus, you know, it's also should be some a state and federal program how to open the more, like, you know, some kind of like, you know, 
location when they will treat the mentally sick people. Because when we speak to our homeless people on the subway, why they actually don't spend night in a shelter? The same because a lot of uh, mentally sick people on the shelter and they harassing each other. They cannot be in the same room, in the same building if they're mentally sick. And that's people who are not mentally sick. They're trying to stay away anywhere. It's you know warm, say in the subway because they don't want to be harassed by other mental people, men mentally sick people. That's that's, uh, that's the answer, right? Basically. Kevin, I think that that's probably a good way of explaining that it's also very dangerous for the homeless out there. And even when they wind up in shelters, they, they become victims as well. Yeah, yeah, and, because, I, and I think yeah. that that's a, a good point to make. And and uh, uh, I'm going to continue going through the list of the people whose hands are raised. Juliet, you want to go next, please? Sure, thanks, Sid. Um, for the captains, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one, first, have uh, the... 84th or 88th precinct um, experienced any reports of uh, potential hate crime against Asian Americans? Um, and then two, I know there's an initiative in Harlem, I believe, um, to have mental health professionals respond to 911 um, mental health crises. crises. And I was wondering if um, our area, do we, do we have a, uh, an initiative um, for that, or do we need an initiative for that, or do you think that's not really applicable? Uh, what well, I speak for eight days, I'm only five five months in this command so far. I didn't see any bias, like you know, like you know, uh, like a race related incident for the last five months, right? As far as I know, right? So, and what uh, regard to those, uh, like, uh, those uh, professionals who can you know deal with uh, you know mentally sick people, that's actually a, a DHA, you know. You know, responsibilities. This was to you know call them in. So, like, you know, we only like being told, so uh, we only deal with them when they violate the law. So, in general, like, like we provide assistance, right? So, so also, uh, like, you know, by you know going so far forward. So, every officer now been trained how to deal with a homeless person, with mentally sick person, because we all this, uh, we have all this, you know, a training program to the department resources, computer, like, you know, basically each officer, each supervisor is supposed to, like, you know, do like at least, you know, once in a year, you know, to. Get updated on how to you know deal with a uh, uh, mentally sick people, right? So like able training, how also to prevent. If let's say we absorb something is not right, you know, done by any other you know city agency uh, like employees, so we should intervene and also you know take some action notification. So that's uh, for sure we all train on this, right? So okay. Darren, Darren. As far as the work, uh, yes. no Asian hate crimes. And we do not have that uh, pilot program in the E4. That's still being uh, sourced out to, I believe, the 3-2. We don't have that in the E4 right now, not yet, anyway. Darren? Uh, thank you, and thank you for coming. Uh, so Captain Wilson, I'm glad you brought up uh, parking and considering parking. Uh, uh, this question is, a, is, a, is about parking. Uh, I walk by the uh, the precinct often and there are a lot of vehicles parked on the sidewalk and they often they obstruct the sidewalk. Uh, it's hard for, for people of different abilities and people with strollers to get by. Uh, the same thing we've seen like I, people biking and the, the car, the precinct's cars are often parked in the bike lane. This is both on Classen and on DeKalb. Uh, what can we do for the, so that the precinct doesn't, you know, block the, you know, the, the people, like, aren't we supposed to be looking out for public safety here? Yes, okay, so that's uh, actually, like, uh, what I'm saying, I want to say, once, once I get to 88 precinct as a uh, brand new assigned captain, so I realize this particular station house, 88 station house does not have parking lot. Now, like, you know, uh, but police cars have to be parked somewhere. It also, like, you know, some of them park it temporary for, like, uh, 10 minutes because they have to drop off prisoners or pick up, let's say, uh, officer for like you know detail deployment right so now uh, when I come to work for sure you know I check you know several times a day make sure nobody blocking no sidewalk I mean they only like you know what call parking in combat style they park in only like for five feet on the sidewalk five feet actually on a road kind of in an angle uh, but make sure you know what I'm doing you know every day two times a day uh, make sure they're not blocking no bicycle lane and no sidewalk to such extent where nobody can pass right so now, like, you know, you're saying, you know, how we can, you know, fix it. So, well, we have some, uh, uh, like, what's called, uh, like, not even parking lot, but it's like, you know, uh, kind of basketball field, but it's so huge. And I realized for the last five months, it was barely actually occupied by anybody, like, by any, like, you know, people playing basketball. So if it is, you know, maybe portion of it can be like, you know, 
you know, redesign into some parking space, you know. Then I'm sorry, I'm sorry, officer. Are, are, so, so one, like, um, this is an everyday occurrence and it's like literally blocking the sidewalk from strollers and elderly people, disabled people, people of different abilities. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, like, I, I understand the term combat style, yeah. but um, like, and, and did you just say that like the playground, like that the children's playground is no, something you want to take for parking? Uh, I'm saying, you know, if it is some, you know, we have the, um, like, you know, lot which is not being used for any purposes, you know, because you say, you know, you complain about people parking on the side. Like, well, just, uh, 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 like I just said, you know, this, you know, particular, like, you know, station house have no parking lot whatsoever. Then police vehicles, they have, uh, you know, 40 different vehicles. They have to be parked somewhere, right? So right, but, in a in the air, right? Have park but, but but okay. but many of these like are many of these are personal vehicles okay. and police vehicles and yep. and you know like everyone a lot of other people manage to to get to work and okay. and go to their jobs okay. without parking on the sidewalk oh. every day. No Is problem. It? Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm doing. Now. Uh, I'm doing it myself. I check, you know, make sure they're not blocking the side of the bicycle on each side. And so I told every supervisor to check on them, you know, periodically too. So. So. Darren, I'm going to move on to someone else if you don't mind. Brian, okay. I've got Sandy. I've got you. I'll, I'll make sure you get call. Brian, go ahead. Um, thank you to uh, both of the captains for for joining us tonight. Um, I just had a question about uh, something you said, Captain Wilson, in your um, in your slide presentation. Uh, you mentioned allowing MYPD to reoccupy shelters. Um, were you referring to the the, like the DHS peace officers who are trained by the NYPD, or are you specifically asking for NYPD to be in shelters? You noted in your crime statistics that I think um, four of the robberies that occurred to Nicole's point that you know being a being homeless means that you're more likely to be a target of a crime than the than that someone who commits a crime. Four of the fifteen robberies were committed in shelters. So I'm just curious what you were asking for in your presentation. No, no, I was saying, you know, uh, so basically, uh, since obviously, you know, mentally sick people and, you know, and uh, homeless people, they do, you know, congregate around the shelters, it, you know, uh, not just an IPD, but other, you know, city and state agents supposed to invest more in money into, like, you know, programs to train more professionals to deal with them, right? Because when they just, you know, let the everybody in, let's say, you know, into that shelter and people are mentally sick, so... So most likely what's going to happen, they're going to, you know, like, you know, kind of harass each other for sure. And they're going to commit some crimes I mean, unknowingly because they are mentally sick. So it should be screening people who they are. And if they badly, like, you know, they're really sick, they should be sending to a hospital or some other location. Because letting them stay overnight in one location, uh, that's absolutely not good. And, and YPD, we have no option to check who they are. So we're not even dealing with them. I'm talking about the uh, people who work in an existing shelter, you know, and accepting the new residents there, like, every day. So... They don't work for NYPD, so I cannot supervise them. And whatever they do, they should be like, by my understanding, should be professional, should be well trained. And if they check right away with somebody really like, you know, acting out as mentally sick person, violent, should not let that person in. So if they do, so nothing you can do about. So you can only respond after facts when person already commits some kind of crime or become, you know, aggressive, right? So that's what I'm saying. You know? So state and city agencies are supposed to invest more into the training programs for those professionals who kind of like, you know, work around shelters right and maybe open more shelters somewhere some area like well i don't know so that, that's that's all i can say so okay, thank you i'm gonna Brian, i'm gonna ellis you want to talk there you go thank you very much um this question is specifically for uh, captain wilson and it's um uh, it's in response to his presentation because I saw um, that overall crime is trending down again. Am I correct? Was I correct in seeing that? Yes. Try so right. so again. Up. Yes. Uh, okay. Slide number six. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I, I, yes. I want to make a related comment then because crime is going down with bail reform still in effect. And you told the... Uh, the anecdote about the robbery suspects yes. um, that had been released for the second time in several months. Yes. And I realized that may be disturbing, but um, they were not just released, released, go back out and do more of that. They were released pending court. Yes. 
And I think that if we're going to talk about bail reform, then we need to talk about it based on facts mm -hmm. and data yes. and not use, uh, you, not use uh, a crime and blow that up and make it seem like it's really, you know, to, yes. the, crip, to the victims absolutely had a okay. terrible impact on them. But if we're going to talk about bail reform, we need to have a responsible database discussion. Okay, no problem. Of course, yeah, of course, we also have uh, based on data. But so these numbers will present like as overall crimes. We're talking about the anything from robberies to grand larceny to police. I mean, we have uh, uh, down from, uh, let's say, year in you know, 2021, it was actually down because of COVID. People actually, you know, trying to stay home, they're not engage even like criminals, they're trying to not, not engage in some criminal activity. So, really, should compare the year 2020 to year 20, like present one, because just in the first few, few weeks of the year 2020, there was no restriction for COVID. That's why I have. 143 crimes so right now only 68 so it's actually due to many factors right so it could be still like you know uh people uh kind of recover from covid but in, ge in general yes crime goes down right but uh certain stuff like robberies that's a you know very serious crime and so if people again no, commit the robbery and gang assault last year november and then they commit the another robbery just right now in january i'm saying you know what kind of release it was i know the pending trial whatever in my understanding, they commit felony should be in jail for at least a year. That's it. No question about it, right? So that's my understanding. So okay, I, Captain. I don't like Nobel reform, but personally, I'm against this. Let's put this way, okay? <laughs> so that, so that we knew, so okay. we knew that, Captain. Let's, uh, Seth. Oh, excuse me. That's a okay. Sandy. You want to go next, please? Sandy, you're 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 muted. Okay. Sandy. There, I got it. So I just want to mention uh, on Tuesday night, there was the 84th Precinct Council meeting, and there was uh, a robust discussion about e-bikes and mopeds uh, driving, uh, the riders driving on the sidewalk. And um, the community was asking for enforcement and more police presence. Um, it went back and forth a bit. Um, it's it's very dangerous, and uh, the community feels that it's not addressed. Um, and uh, I would like to see if we can get some. Uh, I'm on Atlantic Avenue, and it seems to be very bad uh, between um, uh, Smith and Hoyt, um, and. There needs to be a way to change the behavior. And if there's no enforcement, and this is escalated from uh, delivery people um, walking to the, you know, deliver the food to the bicycles, then to e-bikes, and now it's mopeds. And a lot of them are looking a little bit like motorcycles. I don't know what an F an F7 or something that I heard on the news and then I saw one. Um, but can you, um, you know, in the 84th, that, that's where the, it was before the, before the precinct council so, meeting. So Sandy, on the, so Sandy, let Captain Mara respond. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Good evening, Sandy. So like we spoke about at the council meeting, I do traffic in the A4. My traffic agents or my traffic officers are uh, doing strict bike enforcement weekly. So you will see enforcement in that area, Atlantic between Smith and Hoyt. Uh, I already spoke with my traffic sergeant today about that. We have already come up with a few plans. And uh, last night we did seize a moped from a person riding one. So it, the plan is in the works and I'm sure you will see results from it. Is it going to fix the problem in one fell swoop? Probably not, but it's going to be working to address it and hopefully it uh, corrects that condition in that area over there, Atlantic between Smith and Hoyt. Well, I think I think that's important. Um, Andy, see Sandy, Sandy, we have other people. Sandy, I'm going okay. to uh, Seth, Seth Friedman. Seth Friedman. No. Hmm. Sure. Uh, thank you, Seth. Um, so I'd like to talk about, I think uh, Darren brought up earlier, uh, uh, NYPD parking around the precinct, but I think what's uh, what's even more pervasive is illegal parking throughout both the 8-4 and 8-8, um, all throughout the, the community district. 
Um, and we see that not from the NYPD alone, but, but personal uh, vehicles as well, all over the sidewalk, all in the crosswalks. Um, and it makes walking around the district very dangerous. Uh, we can't use the sidewalks and crosswalks in these places where people are parked in them. We have to walk into the street where drivers uh, tend to be fairly reckless, especially around uh, Flatbush Avenue. Um, so uh, I, I've opened a lot of 311 uh, complaints about these illegally parked vehicles, and they tend to be closed either very quickly, um, and in the cases where they're closed very quickly, nothing is actually done. I've, I've stayed in place in a lot of those cases to see if any police officers come to check out the illegally parked vehicles, but they're still closed, uh, and said that action was taken. Um, and so what I'd, what I'd like to ask is, A, um, what are you doing about the fraudulently closed 311 uh, complaints about these illegally parked vehicles. Um, and I'd like to especially address this to the captain in the 84 because I realize the 88 captain is newer. Um, and the second question is what do you think that does uh, to community trust in the police when these complaints are closed without um, actually being addressed? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. So I've been at the 84. Uh, about six months. I think Captain Wilson's been there five months. So regarding to precinct parking, fraudulently closed 311 jobs, I haven't seen any of them. If I had seen those, we have measures for that regarding uh, certain notifications and investigations. So I don't have any information re regarding a fraudulently closed 311 job. Regarding precinct parking, it's difficult because we have a lot of people that work in this building that have to come and go we have numerous different gifts, so it's hard. Also, across the street from the A4 is another police department that I have no authority into, right? You also have FDNY. I'm sure you sound like you're familiar with the area, so it's difficult, but parking in the crosswalk and the bus stop is not accepted. So how I deal with that is when we see that, we have cameras in the command that I can see around the building that uh, the officer or whoever that person is First is notified to move the car, and then they meet with me. And if they become a, a chronic person, then there's discipline for that, because we're not supposed to be parking in bus walk, uh, bus stops, crosswalks, and even grossly on the sidewalk. So that's like a self police zone that we address. We also have station house security that's supposed to walk around and monitor stuff like that. So it's difficult, it's hard, but it's not acceptable to be, especially on the crosswalk, because you need to be able to cross there. So anytime I come across that issue. It's investigated, and if, it, if the discipline is warranted, then discipline is given. Okay. Ernie? Ernie Augustus? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hear me. Uh, you know, I lived in Clinton Hill for a long time. I'm familiar with the 88 precinct. I'm familiar with that building. Uh, it's a landmark building. It's a small building. It cannot be expanded because it is landmark. Uh, for many years, we had looked for an uh, alternate site uh, for the 88th precinct, and it has been, uh, we've been unable to do that. The issue for people that live in Clinton Hill, Fort Greene, is police protection. They want the police to respond when they call. They respect the police. They want the police in the community. To such a degree, we understand we live in New York City. We understand it is a dense city. If people do not want to live in a dense city, they should not come to New York. It's a given. Given that, given the characteristics of this city, communities generally, and I grew up here, understand the concept of accommodation. We accommodate police precinct cars. We accommodate uh, firemen because that's the only alternative that we have. We, uh, I, this city works because we do accommodate. We accommodate religious uh, organizations, churches, when they're holding weddings or funerals Ernie, do you have, or do you have anything else. Yeah, the, the point is, the point, the point is, is that, uh, here's my question. Uh, it's not that the police captain can address that. It's beyond their purview. I don't know why they try to uh, uh, put that to them, but I understand the the dilemma uh, that they have. Uh, and it's, as far as my neighbors are concerned, it's a non-issue. For 40, 50 years, 
the community has been able to accommodate uh, the policemen at the precinct or even their private because they prioritize police protection at you no know, uh, at the highest. And everything else, we're just, we're just going to have to adjust. That's all. Thank you. I think I have one other person, Sharuthi, and then I want then I then I'm going to say something. Okay. Hello. Um, I want to talk about cars blocking the intersection on Duffield Street between Mer between Merrill Avenue and Willoughby, and um, these are not just local cars. These are FDNY cars that just it's it, they almost block one way traffic. So you basically have to drive on the other side. And it's also an intersection and you can't see the pedestrian who's about to cross the road. So your base, it's really creating, a. I think you see a lot of incidents on that particular sidewalk crossing because of those parked cars. Um, I believe um, two days ago, a police car went right by and nearly crashed the pedestrian because he couldn't see that she was coming because of those parked FDNY cars. Is there a way we could look into that and maybe move yeah, yes. them? There's a very simple way. When you see it, make a 311 complaint. If you okay. don't get, if you don't get a response, you should also alert the community board. Now, unfortunately, Taya right now is the only employee at the uh, community board. So, I mean, she's she's overwhelmed with a lot of stuff. But but Try three one one first. As you heard before, that they're respond, they're obligated to respond to them. If they don't, you should keep track of it and let the community board know because they they meet with the, the these people uh, periodically. You know, okay. I, I, I want to at this point, uh, I want to say something. Thank you. Know, you. you know, the 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 traffic. I, what I consider traffic violence is a major problem in the neighborhood. You know, when when we went through the numbers before. There are probably as many traffic fatalities within the community as there have been murders. And there are a lot more injuries that take place. We, we really have where traffic violence, and, 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 and I call it traffic violence. Uh, normally, the, the people who get killed tend to be, as you heard, uh, the pedestrians and the bicycle riders are probably the most vulnerable to the cars. Now, now you know, uh, you, you may have heard me comment before that, that we have red lights, we've got the, you know, school zones, uh, the city has a program which, which, uh, uh, where, where it's a $50 ticket. Uh, but the, the girl who, the guy who killed Apollina had 15, 15, one, five speeds within a year, 15 speeds within a year in school zones, you know, you know, these. Th th this is not merely someone who a fifty dollars ticket is going to make a difference to, and and, and I'm I'm concerned about the traffic violence. I'm concerned about crime. I'm concerned about bikers and motor vehicles. I'm concerned about the new marijuana stores, which may or may not be following the rules. Uh, our streets have become much dirtier because uh, uh, the uh, alternate side of the street parking. You know, the people just sometimes rather pay the ticket than 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 clean the streets. And, and I know that uh, Howard Collins, who's not on, uh, wants to talk with the with the community with the the eight four about working out a way to get more enforcement on these issues. We all want we all want safe streets. We want the homeless treated fairly and appropriately. Uh, uh, we we don't want them hurt. We don't not want them killing people like happened in China happened in, in Chinatown or or pushing someone from uh from the subway those were both done by homeless people so that that while while we want homeless people uh, treated fairly we want safe sidewalks we want you know there has to be a way to attack all of these that meet all the needs now the, the mayor we have a new mayor and the new mayor uh has been very vocal uh about that he wants the street crime units back on to try to get the uh what used to be called the street crime units, but to get guns off the street, to try to bring down the number to, and to get to get more employment for the uh, uh, our youth. He wants to get the re, he wants to get the bail laws to allow uh, those in, those few and it's relatively few who are dangerous to the, the community off the street. So, you know, all those are all these are issues. Please don't accept this as my personal rant. 
This is going to be something that's going to have to be continued to be worked on. Uh, the police officers have a, a difficult job. As you know, uh, uh, we lost two police officers last month uh, responding to a, a domestic uh, uh, a domestic dispute. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's a tragedy for the police. It's tragedy for the city. Uh, and it's something that we're going to have to continue working on. And I'm going to take the prerogative to move the agenda along, but I'm going to give the police, the two police or the two police captains, uh, another minute, another minute or two, if they would like to say something in summary. Captain, uh, Mar Captain Massey, would you like to say something in summary? Sure. Uh, so you're right. Everything you're saying is completely reasonable um you know thank you for having this meeting i think this is a start of it right the more specific information i can get the better it is for me to send out my troops and um the more communication i think we have with each other the better off we'll be so you know it's a hard job it's a frustrating job if it was easy it would have already been fixed it's probably going to take something that we're not doing yet what that is i don't think we know yet um, and I'll just say, as far as the police end, you know, we're, we are law enforcers, not interpreters, not writers, and not makers, right? So we're here to enforce the laws. What's done after that is not really part of our uh, mission, right? So, but I think I'm glad that I was invited to this meeting because I feel like it's helped me out as far as my deployment and hopefully they continue and hopefully you guys can see some of the results based on some of the plans I'm coming up with. Uh, that's what I have to say. Captain Wilson. Okay, so thank you for everybody to expressing their like, thoughts about. So, so mainly like, you know, so of course, police uh, department looking for to work in partnership with the community. So when you're looking for trying to educate uh, in any group, small, big groups, anywhere around, you have opportunity to young adults, what like to, to concentrate on education, go to church, stay with a family, to basically to you know prevent them commit any crimes or congregate to gangs because you know uh again so there should be you no know, engagement to sport activity some family activity church is the best of course i like it you no know, because as long as they engage in something you know good they're not doing anything bad right so please just young people that's a future generation we can still save it please please do it okay it and it would be helpful, Captain, uh, both captains, yes. if, if we can get, because uh, there, there may be some specific information which we'd like to pass on. Can you give uh, 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 Taya an address uh, to, so that we can send some material, material to? Uh, uh, and, and we will hopefully continue the dialogue and, and raise other issues that, that will make it better for, for the community and, and for, for the community. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is is the chairperson's report. And one of the things I want, you know, that the, the we, we've had major issues raised about the Willoughby Street, Open Street, and, and our the council member Crystal Hudson is scheduling a meeting with DOT to discuss this. Uh, so, and, and I haven't got the day, they originally went trying to schedule it for tonight, but uh, DOT could, was, wasn't was able, able to uh, to uh, re, uh, respond to, Chris, to Crystal either, to, to Council Member uh, Hudson, excuse me. Uh, and, but I expect to have that, when we do have it, I will make sure that it's passed around so that, that I know there's a lot of interest in it and, and, and some controversy about it, and at least that you can hear both DOT and, and, and the community can get uh, 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 the community can be heard because I think that that's important. Uh, and frankly, that's all I have on my chair chairperson's report. Is there any other committee business for tonight? Nicole, you have your hand up. Yeah, kind of ties in nicely. Um, so with the open street back open, love to see it back open. Nobody really knows why it was closed or how. Uh, you know, I don't think we're ever going to find out, but uh, there were some uh, accusations that the 88th precinct had something to do with it, that they wanted it closed. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, Captain Wilson has any insight into whether or not the 88th precinct made that call. 
uh, you asked me a question about the uh, parking condition, right? For no, no, open streets. The Willoughby street. Avenue. Uh, the Willoughby open Avenue street. open streets. Uh, you... Actually, I would say, you know, so that part of Willoughby Avenue is not really like, you know, major highway. It's uh, starting from uh, Fort Green Park, goes for like about five, six blocks. So it's not a big issue at all, you know. So I was there, like, you know, checking like an everyday basis. It's not a major issue because it's been like, you know, if you will say open the street, it will not help anybody because you cannot drive through, you know, because the park on one uh, end, you know, so like, it's not a big deal, I would say. Okay, so that's, uh, that I wasn't quite my question, but thank you for saying that it wasn't, it's not a big deal for it to be closed. That's good to hear. Um, but there was no, you guys didn't make a call to, to reopen it back up because it was, it was, uh, the barriers were removed for about a few hours uh, last week and nobody seems to know, but uh, somebody said the 88th precinct had something to do with it. So I'm wondering if you, it could be that. temporary. Let's say you know, it was emergency. They let's say was a traffic, uh, and then a police car or ambulance uh, that says uh, need to you know get much faster. They might open it, but then somebody had to put the barriers back. So if police officer open it and then responded to emergency and never came back, so it may happen soon. So what you can say, emergency happens, All right. right? All right, that's not okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, officer Kenny, you want to want to Kenny, you want to say something? Uh, yes. Um, we didn't make the call in in regards to the open streets, but we had had a lot of uh, complaints about the open streets. So we inquired, but it, it didn't come from us though. Thank you. Thank you, officer. You're, you're welcome. It wasn't me either. Uh, 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 John Do. Yes, um, and I wasn't gonna talk about open streets, but I am now. Uh, and I'm gonna follow up on Mr. Ernest Augustus' point. These streets have been open since they've been built folk come into the community and all of a sudden decide they're going to change the way people have been living forever for their own convenience. You have to understand that this is a community board for people that have been living here forever with streets open. You can't come in overnight and close the streets and not talk to anybody and not accommodate anybody, not accommodate the emergencies, the fire department, all the services that the folk on Willoughby Avenue are used to getting, they can no longer get so that some people can have it more conveniently. That's not how this is supposed to work. Open streets did not become come before the community board. Ergo, the entire community could not react to that. That's what community boards are for. That did not happen with this open streets. But Sid, that's not what I was calling about. I uh, uh, wanted to talk about the city was sued last uh, years ago, and the lawsuit required the city to readjust most of the sidewalk access ADA ramps. So that program is being worked out and said we're going to have to add that and coordinate with the land use committee because they are going to play a role in coordinating the implementation of those uh, uh, ADA approved ramps via the ULER process. So I'm just announcing that because the committee is going to have to incorporate that into the work that we do going forward. Okay. Thank you. Chris. Uh, uh, Cher Ruthie? Yes, I have a question slash comment about the open streets. Um, I know the open, I know cars were not allowed. So residential cars, correct? Like um, they weren't even, I, I was actually stopped at a barricade and had to wait a whole hour when I came back. I work in a hospital in Far Rockaway and I commute by car and I had to wait a whole hour just to get back home one day when that street was on Willoughby was not. So it was on Willoughby between Lawrence and Lawrence is where I live. And I had to call the police, I'm sorry. And they finally let me through. But that was a personal experience I had. Um, so when you put in these open street requests, do you consult with residents who live in the neighborhood? Well, we, we don't put them in. And, and, and first of all, a, open streets are supposed to be able to be opened by the residents. You're supposed to move, be able to move it aside and go through. Now, if that's not happening, I mean, I have I have a whole issue with with how they're closing it and not mm -hmm. making not putting them on rollers. But op the open street program, and you saw uh, and Taya had just put it in. 
you're supposed to be able to go down that street in order to park on that street into your area. If there, now there is one time, if it's an open street for the school, all right, then it can be closed for the schoolyard from like nine to three or eight to four, I believe. Uh, but, but it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to go use it. Now I'm going to ask, uh, uh, cause, uh, that's the rule. I mean, you, you can see that, uh, 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 as, as Tay is putting up, we, we at this point don't control the open streets. They don't even ask us about it. Uh, uh, we, that is an issue that we're having where people should be notified, at least the community board should be able to, so that people understand what's happening. Now, I'm going to go back to Christopher, uh, to uh, Officer Kenny again. Does it, do you have something to add about that? I'm sorry, what was that? But oh, the open street rule, a, a resident should be on the open street. The residents are supposed to be able to use an open street to go park, right? Yeah, you got to proceed with caution to get on a block once you. Right, five mile this. an hour limit, but you're supposed to yep. be able to go on the street. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't because I park on the icon parking in on Lawrence and I just couldn't get through. Well, you're I just supposed to, to wait. That's not there. an open street, Truthy. That's not an open street portion. Not even, yeah. yes. Okay. That's correct. But if, if an open street, you're supposed to be able to go through and, and park, go to the lot and park. Okay, that's that's good to know, though, because I and, presume. And, Kenny, and Officer Kenny agrees with me, but uh, uh, but I do agree, you know, that I do agree. Yeah. I do agree that I agree personally. I mean, that 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 the, it would be better if the community board has better involvement in it. All right. Uh, and and so that at least that that we would be able to say that there's been a discussion. And there's a sign saying close to through traffic. You can go, it's close to through traffic, but through traffic, but you're allowed to go through and park. I'm sorry, I, I want to- Mr. Meyer, I just want to be specific thing. that, excuse me, Mr. Meyer, I'm showing that there are three types of open streets. And I think it's really important for folks to know the difference. This is a picture of limited local access. You can see the five mile per hour restriction. This is the setup for full closure, which would be clearly marked by do not enter, which does not apply to the Willoughby open street. And, oh, full closure for schools. That's it. All right. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, uh, Ernie, and you wanna go next? I'm not, I'll tell you uh, what, yeah. Ernie, hold on, yes. Ernie. Yes. Esther yes. hasn't said mm -hmm. it. Esther, why don't you go next? Hi. Yeah, the community, the residents that live on Willoughby and in the co-op or the condominium buildings are not being, um, um, they're not involved in these open streets at all. Matter of fact, the group who put out this glowing picture of everyone smiling about the open streets being back open, there was not one black person in that picture. Not one. It's like, the, and that's what I hear complaints all the time. It's like they've been taken over they closed the streets. Nobody asked the residents who have been there for years anything. Imagine living in a community and a group comes and form on themselves, these private groups or whatever, and they in bed with DOT and, they, and then they decide to close down the street and don't talk to any community um, organization or anybody who has lived there for years. That's how they feel. A lot of seniors are complaining. So I'll see what happened when Crystal Huston have her meeting. And, and I probably will. I probably will attend as well to see what's going on. All right, uh, uh, Officer Kenny, do you want to speak again, or or uh, you just hands just up there? In regards to what? I don't know. Never mind. You, you're just your hands up. So we're gonna. I put your oh, hand down. No, no. I okay. was stretching. All right, uh, Ernie. Yeah. Uh, no, this is a policy for the simple reason is that there was no engagement with the community, with the broader community. Uh, and you think that you want a general public to support your policy uh, by totally uh, disregarding the broader community. I don't quite understand it. Uh, I know this was pushed through by the mayor on his way out the door. I know the city council passed a piece of legislation that's highly questionable, uh, that may be unconstitutional when we take a closer look at it, uh, because it basically circumvented the city charter. 
if anything, members of the community board take an oath to support the charter of the city of New York. And then Marty Market would say the state of New York and the and the, and the U.S. Constitution. There's some there's some issue about equal protection uh, with this piece of legislation that I'm going to question and to challenge because it is unbelievable. You know, the, uh, in terms of engagement or lack of engagement, you know, uh, we're going to have something, but we do not have to engage the broader community. We don't get uh, uh, a policy where people are going to, su to support something <laughs> if you're not engaged in the process. Uh, and there to be some give and take. So that's all I'm going to say on this. Uh, it doesn't work. They may serve a group who would celebrate themselves. But again, as a native New Yorker, I was born and raised here. And one thing I learned, and I used the word density, I used the word accommodation, and I used the word engagement. Those are watch words in the city of New York. You know, if you want to uh, engage in some sort, sort of authoritarian okay, okay, uh, okay, model, Ernie, Ernie, go Ernie, finish up. Thank you. No, I'm finished. All right, Brian. Um, we've been through this before. Uh, we talked about this last time, and as the as Taya just pointed out in the chat, that there is a long history. Well, not long, but a history since this program started in April of 2020 of engaging people who want to be involved with the open street. And you know, there are times the city makes decisions I don't like but I don't define the community as only the people who agree with me. And it doesn't matter whether somebody has lived in this community for a long time or whether someone has was born and raised in New York. My family has been in this city since before the Civil War and it gives me no more right to say what happens on our streets than anybody else in this room. So I'm, I'm a bit surprised because I hear people who are always making the process argument of, you know, they did this to the street and they didn't tell anybody. Well, they tried to you know, rip up the open street the other day. And I would think that those same people would be annoyed by that, you know, breach of process. And to only be annoyed by it and only make the process argument about we weren't involved and we weren't consulted only when the outcome is not the outcome you want is disingenuous. So if we want to have greater discussions about the, you know, uh, will it be open street, then that's what the Fort Green Open Street Coalition is for. That's what the community members, you know, uh, sorry, the council members for. Oh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna... these, these, these arguments are disingenuously raised. I'm getting tired of community being defined as only the people who agree with the speaker. The community is everybody who lives here, everybody who works here, everybody who goes to school here, everybody who, you know, comes and spends time in our neighborhoods it is not the people who only agree with the speaker at the moment. So. Linda LaSalle. LaSalle. Uh, good evening. Uh, I live at 185 Hall Street in the Willoughby Walk Co-op, which is right on Hall and Willoughby. And when I come home, if I'm driving, I have to go down Washington Avenue, go to Myrtle, make a right, come back, make another right, come up Hall Street to come into my parking lot, which is one block away. One of the things that happens is I see there's a congestion of uh, a long wait, wait on, Wash on Washington. Uh, more cars are just sitting there. There's congestion on Myrtle and everything. So my, my take on this is a lot of people are approaching it from an emotional standpoint, but I think there should truly be an assessment to see how the open streets affect the surrounding areas, all these one-way streets that you have to go around. And when I come along, I don't see anyone walking down the street between Washington and Hall. That's the very last street. So I would just request that we do a true assessment to see how it affects the other parts surrounding the traffic and, and all of that. So that's all I have to say. Okay, as, Mr. As Meyer, I, as Mr. I Meyer, say, yes. that Mr. Meyer? Yes. That single block has been the crux of most of the complaints received by the office. And I think it is an excellent suggestion to consider shortening the open streets by that one block. Washington is the only multi-lane street that intersects that portion of open streets. And I, I, 
I, but again, I, I'm not aware of any drivers having actually reached out to Fort Greene Open Streets, so I don't know what their response to that suggestion would be. And, and if you remember, my initial response was to reach out to them. But in any case, the Congress, the City Council member, is holding a forum on this. DOT will be there. All right. Uh, I do have an issue that. Where, where, it, where even though it's a, a community group that may be interested in this, there are other community groups that are interested in other things, but it has to come before the community board so that the wider people have a chance to be heard on it. Now, you can disagree with that. You're entitled to. I don't necessarily, uh, you know, th that's my personal opinion on this. In any, in any case, uh, there will be a meeting that the council member is hosting with DOT. And I would suggest that those people have these issues, raise that with them, but I will continue to raise the issue that these matters should be at least presented to the board so that we can have a chance to give a, bro a broader I a response of what's going on. And you could disagree with that, that's fine. That's the point I'm making. And uh, I'm going to use. Is, is there anybody else who wishes to speak on another matter concerning open streets? Hi, this is Latrell. Can I speak? Hey, Latrell. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to speak as a disabled individual who takes accessorized, and I have some concerns because, like, this time that I went to locations, and I could not get to the direct to location because of the open street. So I, we had to be redirected. And I think that's something also to think about. I've been, for me to get, not just for me, but for people who take accessorize. And this community, we need to get to certain locations. And because if this open street, the accessorized drivers cannot go to this, through that particular location. So that's a concern for me, as far as a person who takes accessorize. I was in an incident when I, a friend told me to tell the tap, cab driver another incident I was taking a cab somewhere to have the cab driver drop me off at another location. If she didn't come to get me at that particular location, I wouldn't have had no idea where I was at the time. So I think, in, and when we talk about open streets, we need to think about this whole community of people with disabilities who had takes accessorize. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Not being anything further on this, is there anybody who wishes to raise any other issue? I just wanted to mention about street safety since I opened with that at the beginning yes, of the meeting. Since uh, since the open street was implemented um, on Willoughby, that's pretty much the only street, there's maybe a couple more that hasn't had any incidents um, basically at all. Um, it's the one stretch of safe space where people can walk, ride, even drive if we have to, where there are basically no crashes and it is a few blocks. And I think that if, you know, I, somebody having to drive seven minutes out of their way, to me, uh, a whole neighborhood of people able to have somewhere safe to go. I mean, when I, I don't ride my bike that much, but when I do, I always go down Willoughby out of my way because it's so much safer than any of the other streets walking as well. I walk my dog down that street every single day, multiple times a day, because it is the safest place to be. I don't want to get hit by a car. I just saw a video the other night of a guy in Queens whose head was run over by an SUV. And I don't want that to happen to me. Um, to the uh, points about accessoride and um, uh, people who want to be involved. So it's not the community board, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, that does this program. It is DOT and Fort Green Open Streets Coalition. Absolutely anybody is welcome to send an email to become a volunteer and help to make the program better, to modify it, um, to make it work for everybody. Um, I'm not a disabled person myself, but I have spoken to people coming out of Accessorize to ask their opinion, and it is mixed. There's some people who like it, there's some people who don't. We're never going to all agree on whether we like it or we don't. It serves different needs. It sometimes is bad for people, but that's the nature of, to Ernest's point, being in a city. We all have different needs and desires, and sometimes they don't always mix. Like, this program is here to stay, and it can be better, and it can work for more people. Um, or we can, you know, spend time yelling at each other back and forth. But I invite everybody to uh, contact Fort Green Open Streets Coalition and get involved if they would like to see it. Brian, you want to say something else? Yes. Um, so uh, I think a month, a year and a half ago, um, uh, the Bridges for People uh, campaign came and asked us for a letter of support um for uh you know road space on the brooklyn bridge to be converted into use um by people uh 
uh, Vikings to relieve the you know, crowded conditions on the top of the bridge. Um, and that uh, has since been done by DOT. Uh, the campaign is now focusing on safe routes to the East River bridges, um, particularly uh, uh, approaches to the Manhattan Bridge, both in Brooklyn and Manhattan. And um, there is a ride that is being scheduled for February 26th. Um, I know that Councilmember Ressler is attending, uh, Councilmember Hudson and Councilmember Hanif have also uh, been invited. Uh, the, the borough president uh, is likely to come as well. Um, I can share the details in the chat, but it is going to be um, Saturday, February 26th, uh, starting from the Northeast corner of Hoyt and Skirmahorn, uh, and then riding to different points between there and the uh, Manhattan Bridge. Okay, thank you. Could you, put the, could you put the information in the chat, please? I will. Thank you. And I'm um, sorry, and the, the purpose is to extend an invite to all committee members and board members uh, to, to join us on the ride. I might say us, I'm actually a part of the campaign, but to join the campaign on the ride. I'll be in Florida. Call me. Sharuti? Um, I, Nicole, I just want to say, Nicole, can, do you mind putting the link for how the Fort Green, because I think I would like to volunteer yeah absolutely I, th I think it is I, th I think we put it in already i think it's it was lost it's lost to the ether i'll put it again yeah put it again okay john yes yeah, sid um at some point in the near future we have to add to the agenda registration of certain motor vehicles the two-wheel vehicles that's an issue that has been coming up quite often there are lots of accidents that are caused by those two wheel vehicles, whether they're bikes or mopeds or whatever, they don't have to be licensed. And given that they are proliferating, they are coming with a whole different set of issues that we have not yet begun to discuss. So that should be added to the agenda for the transportation committee to begin to investigate. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I don't think there can be any ticketing as people propose or, any reporting until there's some way to identify these vehicles and what what their requirements are for being driven and meanwhile they're speeding up and down the sidewalks and narrowly missing people they won't talk to anybody we don't know who owns them i mean it's just i don't think anybody's tackled the the initial steps of dealing with them you know and it's got to be done and they the people who rent them or drive them or own them or whatever they do, give them to their friends, <laughs> have to know that, that we have, that there, you know, there's a way of identifying them and making people who use them accountable. Okay. That hasn't even begun. That's true. Uh, we, we, will, we will consider it for the next agenda item and see if we can get some well, make a presentation. Well, I don't think they can present on anything because they don't know anything. They can, they do. And, 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 I'd love to hear it. Excuse me. I didn't interrupt you. I hope they will. And But as far as I can tell, there's... No, you know, Marin, you're not recognized at this point. All right. Uh, anything, the, the, that's the uh, community forum. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still writing the uh, information to paste into the chat for the board office. If you oh, I won't shut it down for a while. We'll leave okay. it open. Okay. Thank you. We'll leave it open for a while. Uh, motion to adjourn. Have a second. All in favor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, officers, thank you as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.